Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and Average Actor. Chris Toll. Target Man. Suspicious Character. And... Welcome to Football Daft, the Daftish Scottish Football Podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who has sensationally blocked Chris Toll on Instagram. It's Gredo. What's that all about? Oh, uh, well, so, uh, you know how I like to call my mark a punter? He must have took it the wrong way because he was voice noting me giving it, yeah, you know, because he was sending me pictures of him and Snoop Dogg for back in the day and he's giving it, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of people get the chance to, you know, get a, Get a pint with Snoop Dogg. I've been a very lucky person. I'm gone. You are a fucking mark. So the next day, he's so obviously been bailing up. So he went into my Instagram yeah. and he started writing Mark, 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 Mark under the pictures of me, me with all the wrestlers and stuff like that. But he forgets I was actually working with these wrestlers. Anyway, he get blocked for his shit. Can I give it? Can you unblock me now? Can you unblock me? <laughs> well, I've seen all this on the group chat that he said it, and I didn't get around to seeing what had happened, but. Is it no convenient that in the week Neil Lennon gets the sack and you block him on Instagram? He's not here. Mm. Where is he right what now? Is, is, he at, but is, he, is he at Lennox mm. Town right now, we told? Mm. 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 be involved in the, the nook. And yes. maybe, he, maybe he's there to help uh, John Kennedy steady the ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard, I heard Hoopy the Hound is looking for a... A partner in crime to do the pre-match build-up to get the season tickets rolling. Uh, I think there might be. You've got Hoopy the Hound, and now you've got Hoopy the Puppy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, John. Did they actually I say? I'm not. I know. You know. I don't get in the group chat. Was where is he actually? Not here today. Uh, his uncle died. Which um, right, what else so has been, what happening, else has been happening in Scottish football since the last time we spoke? Uh, I think. Uh, he's not here to talk about mm-hmm. Neil Lennon's departure at Celtic in the wake of the defeat to Ross County, but Credo, what did you make of the latest Celtic debacle? I had a funny wee feeling, mate. I just had a funny wee feeling on on mm-hmm. Sunday. We spoke about it on Rangers Daft, but watching the old Rangers on mm-hmm. Sunday, man, it was... Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. first 20 minutes were a wee bit mean, you were kind of texting one another going, as you said, quite rightly so, it was quite reminiscent as to, the, to the game at Hamilton. But once we once we, yeah. we started, we couldn't stop, and it was sublime. Oh, it feels good to be a, a teddy bear these days. And I thought to myself tonight, <laughs> man, I've, I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling Celtic might drop points tonight, and sure as fate they did. Um, they did. Mm-hmm. Big Jordan White. Jordan White comes from a very big Rangers family. Apparently, staunch Rangers so family. It seems. Dad. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. So he'll be yes, he'll so be absolutely he's, delighted. Who do you think's going to get the job at Celtic Park? Who do you think? Well, this is thinking about this today. I I think they're going to. Str- I mean, what is it? There was talk. Of, there was the, the text at the weekend with Martinez and Maloney. No, Martinez. You see, no, the the Belgium. That's not happening, is it? I mean, you can tell me. I right, don't see that. Rafa's is Rafa. He's the happening? Belgium. I don't think Rafa's fallen out of the equation yet. Right. But here's the he, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Your big names, your Martinez. Your fucking Benitez, they're going to want a right hefty transfer kit, ain't they? Mm-hmm. Was I start to sound like Steve McLaren who's in Holland there or something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your, your Martinez and your Benitez, <laughs> but he, <laughs> they're going to want a big transfer kitty. <laughs> <laughs> a big a transfer kitty, a kitty, and Benitez <laughs> says it's a kitty. <laughs> but you're right, mate. It's, but, but do you know, Hank, it's Celtic. I mean, I know they spent money last year, right? But They've made a lot of money over the years, man. I don't think they've replaced. Right. Really, it's going to take, as everybody yeah. keeps saying now, it's going to take a Hollywood signing for for Celtic fans to aye, be happy. Aye. But also at the same time, man, I know I'm fucking having a laugh saying steady the shit, but see if I'm a Celtic fan, I'm maybe no... I, I, would, I would take Steve Clark as a Celtic fan because... Do you think so? I don't know, man. I just feel just for next season, maybe right. Say, say it's a kind of I don't know, just a one season to to just kind of see how I don't know. 
Right, let's, let's put it to you then, Graves. So you say Gerard le- leaves at the end of the season. Would you take Steve Clark for a Rangers? No, because he's not a Rangers fan. That's what I'm saying. He's a, he's a Celtic fan, isn't he? And I know he said in the past that he doesn't want to get involved in old firm because of bigotry and all this kind of carry on. Understandable. However, I don't. I just think, mate, it's not to be sniffed at in terms of he's, he's worked. Where has he worked? He's worked at Chelsea. He's worked at Liverpool. Who was it he managed for, for a wee while? West Brom. West Brom. I think uh, Steve Clark, a wee, bit, a wee mm-hmm. bit more money than what he'd have, a lot more money than what he'd have at Kelly. I don't think that's to be, I don't think that's to be. He, say, he, says, he, does want to get, he says he doesn't want to get involved in it all. He's not going to knock it back if he gets offered a sale at Joe Pizzi. I think he would. I think he would. Do you? Yeah, I think he would. I think he would. If, if, if Celtic tell him, right, look, get through the Euros, but while you're... Until then, here's what we want you to do. Have a look at these sort of players, whatever. I don't think it's a bad shout. Because we, I mean, they're not, you know what? The Celtic fans are only wanting Jack Ross anywhere. They're not going to get David oh. Moyes. He's doing too well down south. Yeah. You see, no, the Ibanez and Finetti's and all that. They're John, fucking. Current betting is John Kennedy's favourite, which is not going to happen. I, I, I mean, come on. I mean, my, my I, mate. Bob. Bob. How, my mate's just texted me saying, I'm hearing Clark's going to get the Celtic job. I mean, I, I've got, a, I've got a, a really funny. My mate has literally, I'm not, he'll remain nameless, but he's just texted me. He's a Rangers man, but he says, I'm hearing Clark's going to get the Celtic job. That's three Celtic pals I know who are usually good with the news told me he's getting it. Uh, see, I called it, mate. I'm chuffing myself there because I, I, I think, I think that's it. But, mate, because I was going to say to you there, wouldn't it be funny if, and by the way, I could maybe see this. That, that Kennedy does well until the end of the season. If he goes out against Aberdeen next week, is it Aberdeen they play and they take goals after? Aye. But I think it's going <laughs> to be Clark, John. John Adé, I think it's got to be Clark. And I, I, I would still say, I don't think that will appease the Celtic supporters. The Celtic supporters want, and then I'm sure Chris will say that, they want, they want a box, they want an Eddie Howe, they want a Frank But Right, 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 right. How, how, how many times can say, I mean, Dermot Desmond pulled a rabbit out the hat with Brendan Rodgers, right? You've went for Brendan Rodgers. Who's to say you're not going? They're not going to get caught because you're going for a way up there, Brendan Rodgers. Then going for the ten, the nine and the ten, and you replace it with Lennon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, who's to say replacing Clark with replacing Lennon with Clark? That's doable if you're replacing Rodgers with Lennon. John, it's also I also think it's safe and all. It's a safe, I think it's a safe bet with Steve. Well, I, I think it is. A, the, the experience yeah. that he's had. Yeah. But, uh, but wait. I mean, even that's why I'm saying, even if it's just, for, uh, if I'm thinking of a Celtic fan, even if it's just for a year, one year, two years, to just kind of build these in foundations in a team, I don't know, maybe I'm talking a lot of rubbish, but I can just... John, John you're, you're getting quite upset here, Johnny. What, what are you getting so upset about? Why are you so <laughs> uptight about... Steve Clark, Clark, just, obviously, he's doing a good job for Scotland, and you wouldn't want to see the the, the ship bung stay. Oh, you look quite, you look quite, you look quite upset there, John. Are you coming at the closet a wee bit here now. Right, no, can, okay. Anyway, good luck to St Johnston and Livingston who play in the League Cup final this Sunday. Who drinks one and that one? It's a tight one to call. I'm going to go with Livingston because I like Martindale. As I say, Martindale, breath of fresh air. Heard them on a couple of interviews. Aye, man. I, I really hope that Livingston win. They play out their skin and then they play us next week. And, and uh, they're, they're then they're dead on their feet. Bust. I think, honestly, I think St. Johnson. I think Livingston are on a dip of form. And I think St. Johnson are <clears> a dip of form. Do you really think so? Yeah. Mm. I've, I've, I've recently, I've not been great in St. Johnson. Callum Davidson, I think, has done a really good job in there at mm-hmm. St. Johnson. And they're on the kind yeah, of. Yeah. Well, as a, when, they, when they played at Ibrox John a couple of weeks ago, man, they were the best passing team, I think, at, 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 that we had seen at Ibrox this season. Or at least one of them they were. They were really, really impressive. But I, I, I think I just, I think quite a lot of folk will probably be back in uh, Livingston and Martindale, I would imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of folk would like aye, to see aye, that. Definitely. Now, the question has been asked for ages, but what if Rangers and Celtic played down south, right? Where would they end up with our current squads? Well, on Twitter, a Twitter account, no context, football manager, one place the Jairs and the Hoops in the championship, where they replaced two of the worst teams in the league. And after playing out the season, Stephen Gerrard's side would come agonisingly close to Premier League promotion in third place. Well, the Hoops run away with the title as champions. You can see the th- full thread on their Twitter. But what do you think would happen, Greg? What do you think? 
Well, I don't rate. Look, you've watched the Premier League. I fucking, I, I think it's a graft watching it. But what's what's hypothetical here? What's what's the money? What's well, you're looking at it. If Rangers and Celtic go down there, right? Rangers and Celtic went into the Premier League. I don't know, John. Would you agree with me? They've got a, they've got a big fan base where they would end up receiving the capital, the revenue that all the big teams get, and I think they could hold their own. By the way, I think they were up there because the, mm-hmm. the, the, there's players in the Rangers team, especially that would walk right walk right into some Premier League teams. You're talking Barisic, mm-hmm. you're talking Kamara. We've got a great goalie, Morelos. I don't yeah. see why no. I, I don't think, see why I, no. I think Celtic and Rangers, if they went into the championship as this thing did, I think Celtic and Rangers would win the championship. I'd be first from second. Um, Could so, you imagine it, man? I reckon, I reckon, oh. I can, look at, you look at the championship and you look at the, I mean, the players that Rangers and Celtic have and the, the, the backing they have, I think they'd win the championship. When it gets to the premiership, however, I think it's a different kettle of fish. You know what I mean? It's like the two yeah. big clubs, but you look down. I I I think they would struggle in the mid t- round the mid table, Rangers and Celtic. Either but, way, right, does it- here's the thing. Here, here's the thing, though. Right, Rangers and Celtic are receiving the same amount of money that's getting pumped in for Sky as most teams are, and they've get Rangers and Celtic are fucking worldwide institutions. So they're only going to get stronger and bigger and stronger and richer. So I don't know, man. I it, think it would take a, a, it would take a long while. I would take a long. I don't know, John. Mate, I don't think. I don't. It would take, so I would take major. I mean, we're all being we're hypothetical, but like you say, if Rangers and Celtic were in the Premiership, it makes them very a, a very valuable asset. But then you look at you know just because they're worldwide, like you know, there would be a very you know like an art, you know one of these real rich guys or an American conglomerate would come in and kill mm-hmm. them. But I think it would take a wee while, but, you know, we're being fired. <coughs> right. Initially, initially. Celtic. Celtic would struggle, but we'd do all right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <coughs> that would have been a good question for the open line, which we'll have on in a minute as we speak more football with you guys. And on this week's big question, we're asking you to make a film football. And our big guest this week is somebody who's been a busy man this season as the host of Super Scoreboard. It's none other than Gordon Duncan. Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698. 767-172 Right, big shout out to our sponsors Nicole and the girls down at G4 Claims who we love, don't we? We love them Absolutely, G4 Claims are a big part right. of this podcast life Yes, and remember if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault G4 Claims can make it easy for you they can provide you with the complete accident management support you require they'll recover the costs from the at-fault party sort you out with a light for like vehicle replacement, and they were I mean, the, the thing is, Bob, your... what is good about it is, Bob, is that if you're involved in an accident, as the co always says, there's no point uh tampering with your air insurance. If you're not at fault, yes. go to G4 Claims because they're going to sort it out for you with foot hassling your actual insurance company. That's the way the short exactly, and small, exactly, exactly. Yep, and if your vehicle should be deemed a write off, they'll recover the pre accident value for your car and write you a big fat. Check for it, and best of all, it won't cost you a penny. They charge the, they charge the app fault insurance direct. They don't call call, Bredo. They don't, no, they don't. I've never heard a one person yeah. going that G4 claims were, were phoning me through the nick. It's not about that at G4 claims. Nicole and the team have got it all sort, so, sorted out. Yep, they don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, get on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims? Not at fault not claim. at claims. Made easy. Made easy. It's the Football Daft Open Line and it's the open line where anything goes. Um, who should be the next Celtic manager? Who's winning the League Cup this weekend? And where is Chris Toll? All these questions could be answered and more. And as usual, we have our esteemed panel with us, Mr. Graham Guidi and Mr. Stephen Kevins. And um, let's welcome the first caller to the open line. Um, he is a Livingston supporter 
be watching the League Cup final oh, wow. this weekend. It oh, is right. Mr. Stuart Barry on the open line. Stuart, you're on the line. How you doing, Stuart? Hello, troops. People who do good. How you doing? What's this, what's this yeah. happening in the world? Ugh, fatter due to lockdown. Mate, staying in. <laughs> Don't even go there, Stuart. Do not even go there. It's absolutely ridiculous. I know. I caught COVID in uh, November and put on two stone. How does that work? Aye. Well, everybody brought round treats. Oh, you're no well. Here's a cake. So I just want to eat a lot. And I like pies. So everybody just kept bringing round pies. Oh, here's a couple of steak pies. Thanks very much. What's your favourite pie? Yeah, I would go with the steak pie over the mince pie, but I would have to go with ball call butchers. Oh, aye. You had to go ball call butchers. No, no, mate, I would... No, mate, I would go with piesports.com. By the way, we were just talking before you come on earlier. We've got a wee bit of a soft spot the now for Livingston, and it's all got to do with, with, with David Martindale. What's your thoughts on him? Aye. It seems like a bit, total breath. Of, at first, I thought it was a kind of comedy act, right? I've got to admit, I thought it was, when he, he, it was, a, it was something for all an excuse, but I've actually listened to him in podcasts. What a breath of fresh air that guy is. He, he's just the same. Now, I've known Davey for 25 years, maybe a bit longer. Um, and even at Beat 106, Davey, remember he talks about in all his stories he used to own bars? And I got yes. the 106 DJs to play at his bars. So right. Huggy and all that played at his bars. John, you, I'm surprised you never got a gig there. I, I didn't realise it was Dave Martindale that owned the, all those places. Ah, it was some of them. Depends on you know, He had a, a place in Edinburgh and uh, a bar in Livingston and Davy is the same now as he's always been. He's an honest, genuine guy. Um, I started talking to him more because obviously I didn't see him for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see him again. Oh, like, oh, here you are. And obviously, staying in Livingston, you hear stories and you kind of you know that he's not around. Um, and then uh, I just talked to him about football, and he loves his football, and he just talks about it so well. And um, he's done amazingly, but. The, where his main successes are, I think, is he's just being himself. And That's it. Absolute. He might not want you to think of that, but he has a role model for people who have made mistakes. You're allowed to make mistakes. His was a serious. Of course, problem. mate. Of course. And but now he's you know he's turned his life around and he's got a lovely family and they're all involved in the club. He's there. He's there. It's like eight in the morning and leaves at ten at night quite a lot. And you know when the Hamilton game was cancelled. Um, he was there for 14 hours clearing the pitch. Just comes, aclo- so comes across as a right genuine guy, and I don't yes. think he actually enjoys. See, whenever I don't actually think he, he sounds, he seems like a guy that would maybe be no mortified, but like the way we we're talking about him just now, he's no into it for that. You know, he's no. No, and, and the other side of things, I got to work with him. Now, I've known him socially for a long time, uh, and uh, I was part of Keegan Jacobs' testimonial committee. Can you remember when we got promoted up to the Premier Division and Falkirk got relegated to the Seaside League <laughs> that year, John? Uh, we're not talking about that. <laughs> so, uh, and the way that he spoke about the players and Keegan, and he would get in touch, right, how's it going? What do you need? How can we help you? Uh, and he was brilliant that way as well, because you could see that he was all about the players. And he and they dropped me emails going, look, you know, I want you to keep going. Keegan deserves this. Do what you can. See if you can help him out. And we never made a fortune because, you know, it's Livingston. Mm-hmm. Um, but he couldn't have been ever, any more helpful and he couldn't have done more for Keegan. Aye, that's good. That's good to hear that. These stories like that. We're, we're desperate to Aye, get him on here, aren't we? Yes. Absolutely. Aye, Aye definitely. Yeah, Could you, that would be great, mate, because John was trying to get him on LinkedIn, but that would be <laughs> ideal. Hi, John's gone. John, go on. In a couple of weeks, Dave Martin, they will be on the show. Wow, man. Mm-hmm. You're, um, how do you think you're going to get on this weekend? It's a tough one to call. Um, my friend Fraser and I have already been sending each other's texts. You know that bravado, oh, we're going to beat you, we're going to beat you. Um, I, and I think right. we are the underdogs, but that suits us. It suits our style of play. I think it's going to be a tight game, not many goals. Both teams defend well. Uh, I think... Fair to say, St. Johnson are a bit short, short shy. You know, they're not scoring that many goals. We are not giving that many away. Um, the last couple of weeks, people see our form dipping, but we went 14 games undefeated, uh-huh. including Scotland's first 10 in a row Aye. this season. The only 10 in a row that season. That's right. They, that, <laughs> their social media team with that were brilliant. That was a wee bit fun. 
but uh, class. And I think maybe psychologically some of the players are holding back a wee bit, just keep themselves fit. I don't know. Um, we haven't watched the games. We've actually been close the last couple of weeks. So I think it'll be tight. I'd love to think we'd win it. You're a Livingston fan, so you don't go for glory. You've got no glory hunters. We're just mm-hmm. there to watch our team from our town. Um, but if we be in there's like winning. But see if we win, what a victory parade in front of 15 people that'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I think it, I, it's fate, man. It's fate for Martin Dale. He's got to do it, I think. I think it's fate. Uh, Davey deserves it. The players deserve right. it. You know, we've got some young, exciting guys coming through. We've got some veterans like Marvin Bartley, who, you know, this would be his last chance. You really want him to win it. Mm. He's been fantastic for us. But for the fans, you know, there's no many fans, but they're, they're loyal. They go week yeah. in, week out. Um, and it's been, you know, a few ups and downs the last few years. I was one of the ones that were Stranraer away when we got hammered on a Wednesday night to get relegated in the playoffs a few years back. So it'd be, what, five years later in a National Cup final at Streamland. And but this year's been so rubbish yeah. that to have this distraction for the week's been amazing. May join the club. That's what I'm saying. Me, me and Bob talk about this being Rangers fans. Like right now, you, you know, we're only just beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel. But it does a hell of a lot for your just your your well being. Mental health, man. Mental Aye. health, man. The fit, the fit better than us is Gallus is great for us. Aye. You associate with this? Aspect. But as long as Livingston just leave everything out there, mate. Aye. As long well, as that's... Livingston leave everything out there on Sunday. And then you know. you're still dead on your feet on the Wednesday night. Correct, the play. correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thanks for coming on and uh, good luck to having Stuart the weekend. Uh. Cheers, guys. Thanks Cheers, Stuart. Thanks very much, well. pal. Thank, Thank you. you, Stuart. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thank bye-bye. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All the best, all the best. Um, let's move on to our next caller on the line. Um, is a Celtic supporter and it's Jason. How we doing? How you doing, Jason? Good to see you again, mate. How are you? All How are right. you doing, thanks man? Thanks for having us on again. No worries, mate. Jason, I'm zoom you're on to talk about Mr. Lennon. Eh, uh, no, no, really. Just forget about him and move on. <laughs> who's, who's Lennon? Never Fair enough, him. he's honest, aye. Right? Yep, yep. Never heard of the man. Uh, so I've got a question for the Fouries, the, the two Rangers fans and the two Celtic fans. Oh, so he- is this- <laughs> <laughs> This is unfortunately off this week, Jason, so I'll have to try and answer. Oh, yeah. The bigger Celtic fan then. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it behind. Uh, right, so question is, obviously Celtic are looking for a new manager in the summer. I have a strong opinion that Gerard will go somewhere else if we success. I can see him going to England, uh, perhaps Liverpool. But, so the question is, if you could pick any active manager in the world to manage your team, Celtic or Rangers, who would you pick? But they would need to work with the players you've got and the, the likely budget they would get. So whatever it is, 10, 15 million, who would you take? So I don't know if you want to answer this boat first, Bob, but I, I don't know. Just what you're saying there about Gerard getting uh, away in the summer, I, I totally disagree. Uh, I think that Gerard is not going anywhere. If Champions League next year, I, I believe he wants a crack because at the end of the day, I think yes. Steven Gerrard and the only other team that I think he's going to end up managing <laughs> is Liverpool. If no Liverpool, I don't see him, I actually don't see him having a go at any other Premier League club, maybe a Spanish club, a, a Italian club, but I, for some reason I just don't see it. And I was actually at the, at the start of this season, I thought to myself, see if Gerrard manages to stop 10 in a row and we get 55, I'll be happy. Gerrard can go as long as he's done it, I'll be fine with it. But no. I just I love him that much, and I, I, I the way he talks and the planning that he's got for next year, I, don't, I can't see him, I can't see him moving. So to th- for, to think about another manager, aye, but it's a kind of it's a hypothetical. Fact. It's a hypothetical question, question. of course. It's a fucking podcast. Get a grip, Gray. Do you know what I mean? I'll go first for Falkirk. Um, I'd like to see someone like Tony Pulis come in because you know he gets promotions. He gets the best of the players he's got, and we could be doing with someone Aye. who gets up the leagues and back into the Premier League. And Tony Pulis, someone like that. I mean, you could talk about Mourinho or Bielsa or whoever, but someone like that who knows how to get us out of a situation, get something out of the players. I think Tony Pulis for Falkirk, that's what I'm saying. I would, I would have to go with just watching Man City last night and the way they play. I would. 
Is there a better coach in the planet than Guardiola? I don't know. He does have a lot of money to play with clubs he's at, but watching the Amazon documentary and watching the way he plays, he has that Cancelo playing as like a fucking right back last night and a left back and he's right fitted and the way he slots into midfield, he's got Gundian playing as a kind of centre forward at times. It's like, it baffles me how he does it, but I would go with Guardiola. Guardiola. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Again, I mean, I've watched all the documentaries, Mourinho, I love Mar Mourinho. Um, but I think, I, lo I love Klopp. I, I love Klopp, Aye. I think. I love Klopp as well, man. He's a so, great man-manager, I think. Just, just these wee bits of detail that, I, I'm not sounds daft, but just when I watched that Liverpool documentary and he's talking about how well, his first game, he was looking at the, the colour of the training taps that Liverpool were wearing and, and, and it looked hideous and that was a, just wee things like that. I just... And I and and he I remember also at that press conference last year when he was he got asked about COVID and he was going but you didn't ask enough about my COVID he's just dead real dead dead, dead real mm -hmm. um aye. so aye. I think he's got plenty of credit left in the bank for Liverpool everybody goes on about Gerard taking over for Liverpool I think Gerard would be the first to say he's not ready for that job and I think you look at Klopp man one bad season he's won them the league for the first time in how many years he's aye. won the Champions League. Come on to fuck, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Jason? Who are you wanting for Celtic? Rafa. He was Gerard. I'll stop between I uh, Bob was saying Pep is probably the best manager in the world. Uh, but I, I've always liked Zidane. I think he's why they're going to be one of the best. Mate, you don't just win three Champions Leagues. Exactly. Be a good fucking manager. Well, Aye. See what Jason, what I wanted to ask, told us we cannot. If he was on us, would, would he take Steve Clark? Depending what you've, what the options are. To be honest, I if it's John Kennedy or Steve Clark, it's no question. Right. And how do you feel about that? And all with the, with the Kennedy stuff, because it feels as if that guy's been there for about forty years. He's, I uh, don't sell rumor on it. He's, he's just he was told he'll he'll always have a job at Celtic because of the injury and whatever, but. Mm -hmm. He's no management material in, in my book. He's only an assistant management material. So give him a, a desk job somewhere and give the job to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Jason, what do you think if, I mean, for Scottish football, I think it would be absolute box office. But personally, what would you think as a Celtic fan if Frank Lampard got the job? Imagine okay. Lampard v Gerrard. If Frank Lampard got the job the day, we'd win the league. That's money. That is money right there. Aye, but a, do you know it's a bit of a difficult situation for Celtic now? I know they they're all talking about it needs to be a Hollywood signing and stuff like that, but it's got to, it's got to be hard for them to actually find somebody that's out of work that's no one not going to be involved in the Euros, it's that big name that's gonna sell season tickets. I don't know, I've got a feeling Come if, if you think I'm daft, but I could see them figuring something out with Steve Clark, take Scotland for the Euros, but work in the background or whatever. I mean, I know he might not be the big guy for the season ticket. I but could see that, mate. I mate, could see that. And, 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 mate, and he, he's difficult to beat, man. We, we always struggled against Steve with Steve Clark's teams. The one team they had, but do you know what I mean? It's mm. Just shitty defensive football, but and it's no, no nice That's to it. You've got AI, but do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks for uh, coming on this week, Jason. Really appreciate that. Um, and cheers, mate. Uh, thanks for having me again. Cheers, cheers, everyone. Cheers for everything, Jason. Mate. Thank yeah, you. No. <laughs> Let's move on to our final call on the open line, and it is Rob. How's it going, Rob? How's it going? Magic. Magic. You're on line four. What's your point call? Excellent. Excellent. So, just about the news for yesterday with Neil Lennon and that, eh? Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, so You're a Celtic back. fan. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just like rubbing it in now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think that was happening. I think that was always going to happen, to be honest with you. Uh, I thought it might have happened before now, but uh, mm -hmm. why did they not just let the boys see you at the season, you know, rather than... Well... I think because there's a chance we can go down there and win the league. Also, Bob, I, think that's it. I don't know, I, I also there's... My, one of my mates that supports Celtic says the season ticket renewals apparently good next Monday. Aye, aye. That's a big part, mm -hmm. mate. That's a big because that's a big threat, and a lot of Celtic aye. fans are saying, "Well, if aye. you want us to pay out money for for out money for virtual season tickets, you know, there needs to be changed." So, but you're right, mate. It has. It, it does feel like why now? You know, because it's 
there's been a lot of fans that have even said for the Ferenc Varos game, the, the Ross County exit in, in November. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one, especially considering on Sunday night he was giving it rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Totally. I think it's like, I mean, you could have the Ferenc Varos thing, the whole debacle going to Dubai, the two Ross County defeated, Ross County putting them at the cup, Ross County beating them up. There's been so many where you could have went, right, his time's up. But I think Grado's right. I think, I don't, damn it, Desmond, they need, they, need to put a, they need to put a rabbit out of the hat, but I was hearing things the other night. The problem you've got, your chief exec is on the road out, but he's still there. Your incoming chief exec isn't there yet. He's coming in. They've not got a manager. Who, who, Who's spinning the plates, man? Who's who's getting a vision here? Because there's nobody in charge until that Mackay guy comes in, until a manager comes in, then what, what are you meant to do? They're, they're in limbo a wee bit now. Uh, but if you look at it, when uh, they went to Dubai, the chief exec said it was his his fault, and then Lennon Aye. comes on and says, "No, it was my fault." So Aye. there isn't any Aye. control there between the two of them. One's Aye. doing one thing, one's doing another thing. Yeah, I'm Aye. pretty happy by the way because I've oh, so much. You know, Aye, so, exactly. Aye. As, okay, as, we, as we've said on this podcast loads, loads of times now, and it's all came through what Morris Ross said, but it's all about the noise coming out. It's everything that's coming out of Rangers bar the 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 COVID it's last week and what have you, but we've been relatively. Drama free, quiet, quiet. Aye, just whereas there, business. it's just Aye. total tenor. I don't know whether I mean, you even listen to Celtic fans will tell you yourself. I think uh, quite a lot of high hegens at the Celtic this year have just thought this was going to be a given for them. Mm. I, I just think they thought it was just a matter of turning up a season and they would don't get me wrong, they, they spent I money, so. but I think that but that was the kind of feeling. Could be wrong. I think the, the thing was like the Rangers over the last two or three years we have been gradually getting better we've been evolving a wee bit don't get me wrong I think the pandemic cut it at the right point for us but we are kind of we've strengthened well I think Celtic have just stood still when we've been moving do you know what I mean and the signings they've made they've spent a lot of money but it's clear as mud the, the signings have cost a lot of money but they've not been doing the job on the pitch because half of them have stayed on the bench for the biggest part of the season so it's credit to Rangers as well. It's testament to the 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 transfers that we've made and the way we've went about our business. I totally agree. I totally agree. I just I just thought they could have played out the season like they did in England, and they might have not mm-hmm. got the nine anyway because uh, we were on fire back there and they were on the on the downward slope. Eh? So, well, I mean, let's go and laugh at some of the you know say, uh, you know COVID has has affected us more than any other team and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, well, he's dead technically. He's what awarded when I mean, whether you, you you could argue if whether you think John you're gonna oh, spit out there. There's no you if you are sitting there as a Rangers supporter thinking you are gonna win the league last season, you're talking never said that. Oh, I never said that. We never said that. Never we never said that. said that at all, John. We're just saying if the, he, you hear Celtic saying that the, the, the f- their club has been affected most by COVID, mate, the, they were given the title and they were gonna win it anyway. But, the, the, a lot of teams have been a lot worse off with COVID. Let's, for example, look at League One and League Two, and all the players. The whole the whole league's been affected. Aye, uh, aye. Some of the Kilmarnocks and Men and Motherwell over the course of the season they've been affected. So I think that was Cel- a- Cel- Celtic were a, were awarded the title through COVID, and they were still allowed to play against a team who got relegated to finish the season before Scottish Cup. So they've been given a lot of benefits. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I would need. That's what it is, man. You know what I mean? Aye. Well told. Where is Toe anyway? Ah, he's 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 away from his pal Neil I... just now, man. He's just seen how he's playing. <laughs> I bet, I bet he's seen splitting new, eh? Well, <laughs> 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 wait, mate. We'll leave you to it. Thanks for coming on, mate. No problem. Cheers, <laughs> Rob. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers mate. See you later, guys. Bye. 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 I'd like to be on the open line next week. Dead easy. Look out for the notification on Twitter, Patreon, or Facebook. Football Daft with G4 Claims. Find them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at G4 Claims Limited. Welcome to Football Daft. This is your stand in host, Mr. Grado. I'm here with Shell Suit Bob, John, <laughs> the producer. Now, you might not know this. It's a Glasgow Film Festival. It's starting this week. And we thought we'd ask you. 
What would happen if you mashed a film with an SBLFL player? Now, I've only just found out about this. Apparently, it's been on the socials all week. So I've been kind of buffing out and trying to be coming up with some puns. I usually like a pun, but I've, I've, I've got one, two, three, four, five. They're red rotten. Uh, I'm going to give you a bash. Let's hear them. Let's hear them. Come dog millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Ten things I hate about you, Nussie. Know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Green Kevin yeah. Kyle. Nah, this is fucking rotten. Lear Jake Hasty. <laughs> Bonnie and Chris Bide. <laughs> yeah, let's see this one. There you go for it. Rita Sue and Bob Malcolm too. I don't get that at all. Rita Sue and Bob too. What's that? Rita too. What's that? Rita too. Oh, for fuck's sake. John, you, John, get, you get it? Get it? John, you get it. Readers of the G Soon Park. Right. Well, let's oh, just go nice, to the nice, fucking. Nice. Let's just go to cause. Teenage, teenage mutant ninja scuttles. You're just stealing that for the punters, bro. Fucking right. I'm reading all the replies on football, Dad. <laughs> anyway, right. Ricky Spence says the mask of sorrow, and oh, the compliance good. officer and the gentleman. <laughs> Gordon Redman said, from Russia with Love Street, <laughs> and one flew over Lukaku's nest. That's good, that's good. That's good, that's good. John yeah. Gilmer says, Danny McGrain spotting, and Rita <laughs> Sue and Bob Malcolm too. Fucking <laughs> God, that's where you got that, right? Okie doke. <laughs> Robert Clark says, no county for old Colin McMenamin. Uh, <laughs> no country, no country. This is a good one. Graham says, quantum of Rod Wallace. <laughs> That's really good. Scott says, and he's copying me, Teenage Mutant Ninja Scuttles. <laughs> Man, God. the Neville Wells Prada. <laughs> oh, I'm getting on a good one. Stuart says, Free Willy Colum. <laughs> John says, Saving Private Ryan Christie. <laughs> JR says, Debbie does Hugh Dallas. <laughs> Craig says, Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Scott says Celtic's disaster movie this season, Tentanic. Oh. Nice. Graham Orr says, A Shota Arvaladza at Glory. <laughs> Blair Gilmer says, Pele Confidential. <laughs> and the big Leandows. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the big Leandows. <laughs> it's, it's maybe the big Lebowski, but John, have you met right? The big Lewandowski. Yes, correct. Oh, yes, I'm liking yes, the next yes. one, Bob. Stuart says, Stuart Ricky Little. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Mate, it's Kidding him. Kidding He's Kidding uh, on. Kidding Kidding on. <laughs> Dave Max says, Men and Ian Black. <laughs> nice, nice. And the last one is from Louis. It says, Fifty Shades of Grado. Brilliant. I got that in a t shirt. Oh. Put it up on my, my website and I, I sold about 70 in the first day. Anyway, that was back when I was over. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. Yeah. Next question be great. Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com. Feel as if there's light at the end of the tunnel. 2021 is finally beginning to look up, which means see if you own a business then there should be plenty of new opportunities for you to grow it. Now, that's whether you're shifting your business's hours, if you're going to be hiring remote employees. The one thing that remains unchanged is the actual importance of having the right folk on your team. And when you're ready to make that next hire, I can't recommend enough LinkedIn jobs. Because what they do is they help you by matching your role with qualified candidates so that you can find the right person at a lightning pace and to lend a helping hand your first job post is absolutely free now linkedin is a big part of people's businesses but it's also it can help you out with business as well on this podcast john the producer you tend to use it and um, the linkedin platform uh to, to get guests on there but do you john yeah i do i i, I use it as, like <laughs> obviously football daft producer I'm linked in with a lot of footballers, you know, mix with Pat Line, Morris Ross, all these guys. And yep. it's a great platform for making connections and networking. That, that's right. The LinkedIn jobs platform, however, is, is going to be big, 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 big handiness in 2021. Because see, at the end of the day, um, 
LinkedIn is a, is, is a quicker way to to build relationships with other businesses. Everything's all cyber these days. We're not having meetings in offices. So LinkedIn Jobs Platform is super for you because it is an active community. There's more than 30 million members in it. And I'm telling you, to get started in it is easy enough. There'll be loads of people out there that are starting up a new business because they might have lost their job through lockdown. There's plenty of entrepreneurs that have, um, that have came on the scene in the last year. And the new features on the website can help you find qualified candidates very, very quickly. What you do is you post a job with the targeted screening questions and what they do is they'll quickly get your role in front of qualified candidates. For the people that are looking out for jobs, what they do is they'll manage the job posts and they can contact candidates for a single view on the familiar LinkedIn.com as functions are streamlined into one simple screen. And listen to this. Now you 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 do all this for your mobile device, and it no matter where, where the day takes you, LinkedIn will help you hire the right person faster. So here's this here's the script here. When your business is ready to make that next hire, find the right person with LinkedIn jobs. And now you can post a job for free. How good's that? You don't need to go through any middleman. What you do is you go on to LinkedIn.com slash daft, LinkedIn.com slash daft. Post the job there for free and your terms and conditions, they're going to apply. Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. It's a player profile playoff with piesports.com bringing you pies to your door even though we're in lockdown. Um, you can taste it. Football, the way it's meant to be, with scotch pies, steak and gravy pies, macaroni <laughs> pies, curry pies, the full shebang you can get at the pie stall page at piesports.com. You can also give them a call, 0141 739 0141 deliver to loads of places free of charge across Scotland. Check out the website for details and you can get your pies in for the football this weekend if you're watching the League Cup. Um, Let's go to our contestant today, Stephen Ingredo, and it might be someone that Ingredo knows because his name's Gavin Steveley. Yes, this is Gavin Steveley. We're not one hundred percent sure if we're related, but we're for the same same area. We'll just just say we're cousins. Oh, huh? oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, we're brothers, mate. Just say brothers. Aye, we're brothers. We can get away with brothers, man. My feeler, you can be my feeler if you want. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, there's everyone in Ayrshire's related anyway, so there's no way. Nah, he's for aid, nah, away. Listen up. All right for this. All right for this. Who's going to be like, Dad? <laughs> Give me, there's my buzzer sorted. Dad. <laughs> no, Gav, you, you've probably heard it before. You know how the game works. I'm going to read out a player profile. Um, you buzz in if you know the answer. If you do buzz in, however... That's your chance gone, um, and it's the first to two that wins. So, Gredo's given us his buzzer. What's your buzzer going to be? Uh, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right, boys. Well, here we go for you. You're a Rangers supporter, Gav, yeah? Sure, I'm I. So, you boys have fond memories of this season. We're going back to the 09-10 season. Oh. Rangers won the league that season. Chris Boyd, top scorer with 23 goals. Um, when the league at Paradise that year, was that that one? I think it was, wasn't it? Mendes. I think so. Aye, Mendes. Boyd scored right after half time. He won 3 0 to win the league. Aye. Aye. So that was the last time Falkirk were in the Premier League as well. So sad. Nobody cares, Cool, bro. mate. Cool. <laughs> and it, the, the big game of that season was remember the 6 6 draw between Motherwell and Hibs at Fur Park? Aye, yes. aye, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that's the players we're looking at from this season. So here we go um, with your first player. So also, I mean, is that is it me and Gavin and Ayers name names with a hat? Is this it's what we're doing? It's going to be it's going to be Steve okay, versus right. Steve, right, man. It's, 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 a now. it's a family affair. Right, okay, let's do it. Aye, right. Let's do it. You know what to do, mate. You know what to do. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no way, Greg. Dad. Dad. There is no way. <laughs> There is no way Grado's thrown this. He's too competitive when it comes to this game. Right, here we go. First on the buzzers, boys. Here we go. This Irish striker moved to Dundee United in 2007. And in Dad! Cousin! Grado. Hunt. You're wrong. Fuck off, I'll man. Continue. Uh, he, sure he's happy. still in play. Uh, and in this season, he lifted the Scottish Cup with him. After an injury, start of the season, he returned with two goals. Cousin! Gav. John, John Bailey. Fuck. 
One nil. Bastard, man. Oh, big math for you to go that great, man. I just fought Hunt right away, man. Right, Aye. here we go. Next Actually, year. I was thinking about it first. Mm. This was to be this midfielder's first full season in Scottish football after coming through the ranks at Aberdeen. However, this season was to be cut short in January as he sustained a knee injury which put him out of action for the rest of the season. He would go on though to play for the Dons until 2017, making over 100... Dad! Grado. Gary Mackay Stephen. Wrong. Fuck off, man! Fuck that! <laughs> you fucked that! <laughs> Nervous, man, because I'm playing my fan. Right? I mean, no I don't. pressure. I'll continue for you, Gav. In 2014, was the subject of a campaign by Aberdeen fans to get the Human League sing Don't You Want Me to number one in the charts following the success of their version. After Aberdeen, he joined MK Dons and is still playing today at Dundee United. What midfielder is it? Stephen, do you know it? <laughs> Need joy, Gav? Nah, I'm struggling. Brilliant. Peter well, Pollitt. Peter Paul. Oh, I can't that, man. Here no we chance. Go. Still in the game though, Gredo, here we go. It's going to be, you're going to have to be quick in for this one, boys. Here we go. <laughs> this Rangers centre half became the oldest player to win. Dad! God! Gredo. David Weir. Correct. 1-1. One, one. That, that was an easy one. It's a juicy one, no? Juicy it's one, one easier. each. Dad versus cousin. Who's going to win? <laughs> right. Ready, Gredo? Yes. This striker joined Celtic on loan from Spurs. Dad! Grado. <laughs> you have to hurry, Grado. Oh, mate, it's so easy, man. I know. TikTok, Grado, TikTok. <sighs> Don't know. Oh, my God. He's blown it. I'll continue with the quick. You fucked it. You fucked it. Right, here we go. Continue with the crew. Or do you know it already, Gav? I think so. We're just going a wee bit. No, I see it. No, 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 no. He joined on loan from Spurs in February of 2010 and was given the number seven shirt. He made a Celtic. Fuck off, man. Robbie yeah. Keane. Correct. 2 1. Well, oh, Kevin Thompson's tackle, man. I thought that was 2007. <laughs> Sorry, it's fine. <laughs> right, you, I'm lucky John, that. you fucking. I'm no. I'm no you're ruining my legacy here. Sorry, it, mate. No, no, no. It's, it's not your fault, mate. Sorry. Fair it's fucking John here, right, who has got a guy to verse me twice in two and one weeks, which you've done, and now you've done it again. You've bought it without even doing it right. So you're Fuck fucking me, me off. Eh, uh, shut up, shut up. Yeah, mate, when you, mate, when, you're, when your wee cousin comes on, man, you can't not play him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck's sake. Right, that would just be I want, to, I want to tow. Where's tow? I know, uh, see? He's, well, so let, he's Lennon me. resigned, man, so... I think Toe's got to sit down with Dermot Desmond today. What's up with the hound? Hoopy the puppy. <laughs> right, Gav, thank you so much for coming. Right, thanks on. very much. Right, see you later, Gav, mate. Nice to see you, pal. See you later. All the best, my man. Cheers, my man. See you later. Football Daft with G4 Claims. Find them on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at G4 Claims Limited. Boys, let me tell you about Final Runner. It's the official last person standing game in the UK. Just in case you're not sure what it is, basically you go up against a host of other players who put all the money into a pot, then pick a team for the set of football premiership fixtures, and that team just has to win for you to go through to the next round of fixtures. The only rule is you can't pick the same team twice. You then keep going until the last person is standing and they scoop the cash. Obviously, the more entries you get, the higher prize you can win. So you want to get all your mates involved for the banter and, of course, the bragging rights. And they have a brilliant game that you can get stuck into, right? It is called Have a Word, which starts this Saturday. And that one's a tenner to enter. So it'll create a bigger pot. And we have a special football daft offer. Is if you enter both the guys at Final Runner, we'll email you a free entry promo for another competition at a later date. For all the details and to get involved, head to finalrunner.com and you can set up an official last person standing game or get involved in their have a word game. Make sure you follow them on social media at finalrunner.com. So get involved now at finalrunner.com. Football daft. With G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notitfaultclaims.com.
Let's welcome one of the busiest men in Scottish football this season. After everything that's happened, you'll find him every weeknight presenting Clyde One's Super Scoreboard. It is the voice of football these days. It's Gordon Duncan. What's happening, mate? Certainly busy between six and eight. I'm not that busy the rest of the day. This season, mental. Absolutely. Has it really? Has it really this season been? Yeah. What, what do you think is? <laughs> <laughs> Every other season's had its moments, right? But let's be honest, this is this has been like nothing else. And I knew it would be like that from the start, because either Celtic were going to win ten or they weren't going to be denied ten. So either way, but I mean the way it's played out, how good Rangers have been, obviously, but then mixed in with just the way things have been at Celtic has been like has been incredible. It's... Every weekend where Celtic have been slipping up, like on a Sunday afternoon or whatever, are you just sitting there rubbing your horns going, What a week we're going to have again here? What yeah. a week. To an extent. I mean, I've always said I'll just take any type of drama, you know what I mean? And in a way, had, had Celtic won 10 in a row, and, and that achievement would have been massive as well. So any any type of drama I'll take. But yeah, there is obviously a part of that. Certainly short term, you know, for the next night, or you know that you're, you're sorted for a couple of nights, because it's just, I mean, where do you start? The full list of it all, from, from ball and golly to the European stuff, to fans chucking fences outside the stadium and... Sharks, mate. The sharks. It was sharks. It was sharks. Mate, sharks. The value gave us a solid two weeks of uh, of madness as well. <laughs> More drop points. Neil Lennon the other day. So, aye, aye it's been mental. Uh, as but Bob Bennett, Bob, we've spoken about you before. sitting, Gredo, you sitting. He's rubbing his hands. That's for sure. Oh, well, aye, aye, aye. Listen, I've spoken about it before. It's like so something happens at Celtic, right? And it say it's like the the I don't know, like the Dubai issue, and then it. It, something it quietens down for a couple of days and you think, oh, it's all byway and then boom, something just comes right. up and you think, oh, here we go again? This is like... Well, oh. it, it, it's like the whole Dubai thing and then I think it was when Neil Lennon had to like, isolate or something and then he came out and done his first press conference yeah. and the Dubai thing was becoming like bloody fish and chip, wrapping paper, do you know what I mean? It had kind of been forgot about and then he just goes boom right into his press conference mm-hmm. and starts absolutely ladling every sports journalist and Nicola Sturgeon and everybody and you're like, he's just brought it all back up, do you know what I mean? But that's gold for you, Gordon, isn't it? That is the thing because then people sometimes, if they're listening, maybe don't quite sort of realise that and I don't mean that in a patronising way but they'll maybe say, oh, you know, why are you still talking about Dubai? It was two weeks ago and you're like, well, you're right, we would probably wouldn't have been talking about it before. Mm-hmm. Then he's gone and you know, kind of brought it back up again. And Scottish football is good or bad, whatever way you look at it, for that. Because whatever, it's, say it's say it's Morelos, right? Does something daft at the weekend, then you'll talk about it Monday. Then the SFA get in touch on Tuesday, so you talk about it again Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Then Rangers respond to the charge on Wednesday, so you talk about it Wednesday. Then Why? You know, and it does keep going. Where so people think like, ah, the Rangers are just talking about that again. But the news cycle just keeps going and you, sometimes these issues, you just don't escape them. But it's, it's, it's a crazy world. It's weird, but I always sometimes think and I go, how could you ever be that mad at the football, right? And go, I'm raging. I need to go and find out what Hugh even makes of this, right? <laughs> However, it is total entertainment. <coughs> oh, it is. And I don't even think some of the callers realise how entertaining they are. Probably not. And I... It's a weird one because obviously like it's been around for a long time and you maybe would have thought that in social media coming along and stuff, it's given people other ways to like vent that. You know, it was probably unique for its time and it was the only way to, to kind of vent your frustration. So you might have thought the social media would have put an end to that. But if anything, it's just kind of like whipped it up even more, you know, because mm-hmm. guys are then so and they'll be tweeting their pals and seeing who's retweeting what and see some stat or whatever and they get, they get really entrenched in it in their wee echo chamber and, and then kind of let loose on the, the phone and then that, some of the guys might be older who don't do that anyway but Aye, um, it's like when you see like Hugh Keevans but when he and we're talking about earlier about Hugh Keevans on Twitter and that when you see stuff like that it like it kind of I don't know it gets you going a wee bit for going right I'm going to listen to him tonight you know I mean you see some of his tweets and he's he's very clever Hugh he knows how to play the game he knows how to get a reaction out of folks so mm-hmm. him on social media and stuff that all helps the show as well do you know what I mean I, he, he's he's adapted so much over the years, like, and I think that maybe goes slightly unnoticed. Like, of course, he's older now and whatever, and people say, well, is he still on? Is this dinosaur? But he's, he's actually, he totally gets it. He's up for anything. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like he, he's embraced social media. If you want him to do some daft stuff or whatever, he'll do it because he gets, I think, I think he realises that the show probably keeps him young. So he's kind, of, he's kind of embraced different things as time's gone on. 
we we had a good laugh a couple of months ago remember because (laughs) i had listened one night and then uh we had recording the podcast and we were talking about you know a lot of people were were saying uh, this was in november time oh but it's coming rangers after the new year you'll hit that bad form it happens every year and i had said just because it rained yesterday doesn't mean <laughs> it rained tomorrow. And they went, well, that's quite good for you. And I'm going, it's Hugh Evans. But these wee, these, wee, these wee nuggets, man, they're superb. I love it. Actually, Andy, Andy Halliday was on last night, and he said to me, like, during the break, because Andy's sort of new to it, so he, he he said to me, he's like, he's, like, he's a master at that. He's like, he's, I, I can't even describe it. He says he says these things that, have got like nothing to do with what you're talking about, and he's like, it, it should sound ridiculous, but it, it doesn't. But he was talking about New Lennon or something last night, and he was just saying, I remember his his debut at Dens Park, Perox, and was it Peroxide Hair and a Feisty Attitude or something? And he just thought, like, this, is, this is we this description. Yeah. Uh, Hardy's doing good, don't he? Hardy's good. He comes a close brown on it, man. He's really good. All I've seen, like obviously when he does other podcasts and stuff, I've seen people saying like he's obviously putting on his posh voice. But he's good at that. He's good at turning yes, on his wee, his wee radio voice. Oh, like it's aye, brilliant. Yes. But the, even Hugh, again, was well, I was peeing myself a couple weeks ago and he, he'll just stop something and go, listen, you're talking tripe. I love that. <laughs> I love all that. No, really there was a guy that phoned up the other night talking about his dog Bobo and all that. And then he goes oh. like that. To, he says but this and that. And then Hugh just stops and goes, Right, uh, see, I think his name, I don't know if his name's Andy or something. Yeah. Andy is either at the wind up or just plain daft. Daft, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, now, I don't know, nowadays people are probably a wee bit more sensitive as to like what you can, I can and can't say. So Aye. there are times where I'm like, oh, right, right okay, right, I'll let you. <laughs> no, but you're good at that. I've noticed that as well because it's something you had said before where you went, no, nah, I don't really like that talk. You're quite good at. Um... Aye, it's like Gordon DL that always has the weekend that sex innuendos. Tim and Wilson always have the weekend innuendos. You're like, right, it's a family show. Like, Aye. Up, is a, do you that stuff? Sure, like, I do embrace that laugh, like, obviously, because like the Andy's the same. They just want to laugh. Like, that, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, they, t- they just don't have a. They don't really get. The, the, the line so then I'll always like make a joke and say I'm turning your mic off I'll give you a brilliant example of that if you so, sorry if I'm rabbiting on right no, no mate I shoot your own for man we want to hear you rabbiting on mate <laughs> a couple of weeks ago I, I don't even know how it came up I think we were talking about kilts that's it we we're giving away a, a, a kilt on the sports auction so giving away kilts and we were slagging Mark Wilson because he got married in Mexico wearing a camel kilt, right? The full thing. So he was roasting, right? Sweat bit off him. He's always got a dead red face anyway. So we're talking about camel, this camel kilt. Now, no innuendo, no wee clever joke. Alex Ray just went, <laughs> camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> just shout, just shout, camel toe. We're like, no. Like, like I said, there was no clever wee innuendo there. He just shouted camel toe. Inexplicable, <laughs> right? So I'm like, <sighs> like, what do you even say to that? So, like, we just kind of moved on. But obviously, everyone's lost it and everyone's, like, laughing. And then about half an hour later, I just searched on Twitter, camel toe, just the phrase, and it was just everybody. Everybody's like, talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, they don't get the difference between, like, innuendo and just taking it too far. Aye, aye. I mean, there's... The, the, See when you're you're in the studio and do you because the voices are so many the same calls that go on. How does that work? Do, do you see somebody go on oh, right? Like say you're Laurie for Dennison. If he phones up, are you going right? We need to get him on to, to hear about this, or is it just a matter of it's first come first served? I'm kind of glad you asked that, right? Because I do think it, I do think there's a little bit of a misconception there. In, in some ways, obviously, right, if somebody phones every night, they've got more chance of getting on and therefore they will become a regular caller. So some people are and some people aren't. But take Laurie, for instance, right, I would bet you any money that Laurie has not been on, uh, bear in mind, how many shows have we done this season? Probably a few hundred. I bet you any money Laurie's not been on more than half a dozen times. No. But he's so memorable no. that people think Aye. he has. And then it becomes like this snowball effect where people say, you know, people remember it and people tweet about him. And then when Celtic do go tits up, I see loads of tweets being like, get Laurie for Dennis on something. Aye. Like, oh, <laughs> exactly. Then he's phoning like, 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 why not? Don't get me wrong. Like I say, because we're on every night and guys, will tr- there, there are people who, who get on more than others. But if you think 
I think we we do a few hundred few hundred shows per season. You're just not getting a stage where that's unique callers all the time. That would just be fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. You get people that phone back, but yeah, it's just it's just depends really. It's a, a kind of horses for courses. Aye. Is it is there ever times, Gordon, where there's a caller coming on and you just basically you just want to turn and go, mate, you are just talking one lot of shit. <laughs> Honestly, like you just it's so hard for you to go. I, I just you're you're just for a shite, mate. <laughs> Pretty much. Although do you know what I feel like I have that has become second nature now where I, I just don't I try not to really see it like that. I think, well, even if this is a nonsense point, people are either gonna people then really disagree with that out there or they'll love it or they'll think it's funny or they'll they'll Get is it I? I just, just kind it's, of wind up or whatever. It's like um, if some the guy come on um, saying he wanted Brendan Rogers back, like however <laughs> tough that might be, like it's is somebody listening? It's right. it's, it's entertaining, you right. know what I mean? And it's just about finding that balance. I wouldn't want. I, I'd hate every call to be like absolute nonsense that people think. Oh, who's this guy? But I think if those are like every now and then, then I think you've I think you've got the a good balance. Right, like the guy came on and he started, he was literally like greeting a few weeks ago. He was nearly, he was like talking about Aye. the how it's broke his heart. He can't even contemplate what's going on. And he's, he's all this for season tickets. And I was out walking the dog and I'm listening to him going, he's actually greeting on the radio. I rem- one because I'm, I remember that. So you're th- let's be honest, right? Seeing you're in that type of, if somebody wants to phone up and cry about their football team, you are. Buzzing with that, right? Because that that's brilliant radio. That's mm-hmm. awesome. aye, aye. Well, I would. That that's just a fact, right? And so when he started it, you're thinking this is this is incredible, and you just know that everybody's thinking the same at home. And then of course he, he dropped this bombshell about like his dad not being well, and then he mate, was, that's what got me. I was laughing then, and he said that I felt quite bad, and it, and it was weird then. So I was, I made, I tried to kind of make sure that it was handled in a, a different way there on in. Um, aye. I'm just going to show you because uh, I that went and a lot of co- that super scoreboard is a bit of a, a roller coaster. I know that in mo- most people, when they think of it, they think of the madness, they think of the, the lorries, they think of boys phoning in to get Brendan Rogers back, whatever it is. Um, but every now and then, you just get you just get somebody who's on if it's a bit of serious topic and he just pour his heart out about something. Mm-hmm. So, aye, it's uh, that's typical old school, isn't it? That's like old school golden yeah. radio, isn't it? Really. Exactly, and they're the ones that end up staying with you a lot. The funny, the funnies are great. Aye. I think you know. I don't know. Say we've been talking about gambling or mental health or whatever, and boys will phone up and the bravery to come on. And know how many people are listening and say, you know, I've, I've a guy phoned in recently and said I just wanted to get in touch with you. He says I've not been out of the house since 1982. Wow. Friday night, just out of nowhere, said I've not been out of the house since 1982. I can't. He's like I'm uh, agoraphobia. Like agoraphobia. Do you know- no, no, no to put myself over, right? But I went back to the fire brigade last year to help out during the pandemic, right? What oh, the, here we fucking go, take, man. Take the 999 calls, right? And a wee old woman phoned up. She phoned 999. She had been stuck in the house for weeks because of the pandemic. And she says, Look, son, I just want somebody to talk to. No, I, I, I wasn't. I, I break your it's heart. A, it's a fire line. So, you know, you're getting told, hang up, hang up. And I was like, Not a chance, man. I'm like, What's the script? What's happening? What's happening to you? And just uh, for some folk, they've no, they've no, they've no got family. They've no got MD to talk to. So uh, that does break your heart. And it's Aye, right. I mean, when this all started, that man, that selfishly, my initial thought when the pandemic kicked in, whatever, and the, the league got stopped for a bit, I was thinking, well, how's the show going to continue? Like, Aye. Really stop mm-hmm. it. If anything, it went through its strongest, <clears throat> you know, its strongest run since. And, the amount of messages I've had for people saying, because let's be honest, on social media, how easy is it to lash out and call somebody an arsehole? Or yep. Aye. People, the amount of people who have taken the time, <coughs> like, listen, by the way, you've, I've really enjoyed during lockdown, just a bit of familiarity, familiar voices, having a bit of fun, bit down memory lane. So, that nah, has its serious moments as well. And then, just when you're feeling serious about things, somebody will call Scott Brown a cunt and you need to hang up on them. <laughs> and it, uh, <laughs> well... I mean, what's, what's, what's the crack with that? Is there delays in the studio? How many times have you had to use that? Aye, quite a few. Uh, really? It's about, yeah, maybe kind of once a month or something like that, I would say. Um, oh, as, as often as that, aye? Um, it's an eight-second eight delay. John can tell me from Tom Bobby. Okay. Like, it's an eight-second eight delay, so as long as I catch it within that eight seconds, it disappears. Um, but, but, well, to be fair, it, it disappears, but then... Have you ever missed it? And. Um, 
No, I, I think there was one where somebody did a bit of debate once because the guy was just so unclear and I just couldn't quite make out. But nah, I've got it most times. Um, eight seconds you know, on radio is a, is a long time to kind of react. But the problem is once you do that, you then the caller might disappear. But then if it's something really funny, you're still laughing then and and you need to pretend that it didn't happen. Aye. Hi. Brown one was the, the, the best example because it was a guy who's a Rangers fan, and that's just a word that we use, isn't it? Like we just use that as like punctuation. Like, and he was like, he's a Rangers fan a couple of years ago, and he's like, look at, he's like, do you know what Rangers midfield's missing? And he's like, yeah, I'm not saying I like the cunt, right? But we need this. <laughs> 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 and, and the boys in the studio, man, to them that that's a that's a riot, isn't it? That's like a good laugh, didn't it? That's like a punch in the face because you're just not expecting it, and then you're like, oh, and and in fact, that was a that was a disaster because <laughs> the producer forgot to cut it out of the podcast. Oh, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> went on the podcast, unknown to me. I, I went up next morning, woke up, went and played five sides with Alex Ray, and, that, and I, as I was coming out, I had all these missed calls and stuff. And Roger Hanna, who works at the Sun, uh, phoned me and he says. Did a caller call Scott Brown a camera? I was, I was like, aye, but how would you, how'd you hear about that? And he went, aye, he says, our, our digital desk is, a, is about is about to uh, publish a story called Our Scoreboard Caller Call oh, Scott no. Brown. Oh, no, man. Brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, Brilliant. That is, I mean, that's gold, that, like, great though saying, like, the point of, like, yeah, the people you're doing it with, like, Alex, that's gold to them, but I know you're the one sitting going, oh. I, the it's, muscle pad was we, we we do at seven o'clock every night. We do beat the pundit, phone in, answer the questions against the pundit. So that that's the only time that I can't really afford to cut him off because it's thirty seconds on the clock. You're answering the questions, so the delay you're never expecting to use it. And then just one time, once a boy went, uh, I said which uh, which team's known as the Blue Brazil, and he went, oh 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what did I do? That was the hardest one by a mile. So I have, I have dumped the call, but now we've lost the last eight seconds, and he's he's going through questions in a row in the thirty second period. So my head was gone. I was just like, and then Gordon Diel or whoever's playing against them, they're listening to something else to block out the answers. And he was like, "What is it? Why have you been giving him so long? What's happened?" What? And I just went, "Look, I need to come clean." I said, "He's just he swore." <laughs> Honesty is the best policy, Gordon. Honesty is the best policy, mate. He, he's something else, Gordon Dale. But and he's like, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head now. But the cliches that the Gordon Dale was saying, for but like, <laughs> yeah. so I was driving him for work all night. No, no, that night. Maybe a couple of weeks ago, and he was driving me nuts when he was. He was. He drives me nuts sometimes, man. He was trying to say Greg Taylor's was a stonewall penalty, and he's the only person I've heard saying it. Like, mm. honestly do you know what I don't even because that, he wouldn't he wouldn't usually do this right so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to absolve him from any blame so for people who think that they they would like make up an opinion to to wind folk up they genuinely don't do that as much as people would think like they, they Aye. Really, um, but that night I do not know what happened we were in the office right before it him and Mark Wilson and he went like that nah it's not a penalty right and then two minutes but Dale did oh, Right, two minutes. Oh, in, right. Two minutes into the show, and I went, "Mark, who do you think he went? Nah, not a penalty." And Gordon went, "I, I thought it was." And we were looking at him, and the thing is, you see, because of uh, COVID, we're in different studios. So we were, like, looking, I was like looking at him through the window, like, "What?" <laughs> I, I still haven't got to the bottom of it because, like I say, I know people at home think that maybe pundits will make opinions up to to who can cause, but he genuinely doesn't do that, so. I don't know. Yeah, I was cursing and shouting him. I'm what I've just we just Aye. finished filming and I was driving him and he's saying it's a pet. I'm like, what is he talking about? And even Mark Wilson, who sometimes I think would have made tinted glasses on at times, is saying no. And I'm going, I know. What? I couldn't he's, understand well, he's, it. He's, he's, like, he's, he's like something like a sitcom, like, you know, he just is, Aye. And he, do you know what he's great for it, he'll play up to it, he doesn't mind slag him for his aye, like, aye, aye. and whatever else and United Arab what was it again? Oh. United States of Arabs. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so, God, you're a big Motherwell fan, right? Aye. Have you, how many times due to Super Scoreboard have people were like, ah, you're a Celtic fan, you're aye. a Rangers fan? All the time, honestly. Like, aye. Just, aye it's <laughs> countless. I think you kind of get, I kind of knew that before I went in. So, you know, to the mm. but that was that was fine. Um, my mates have great fun with it because, like, I'm not going to like argue everything on Twitter and try and justify it, but, like, the, the, the actual story is, like, 
so many. I mean, I grew up next to Firth Park. I was a ball boy. I was a season ticket holder. I've got like pictures of ev- at every age. I used to go away and all the. I say all as if we did it loads. Every European trip that we had, pretty much, you know, went away to them. Um, so my mates just they, they think it's hilarious because like some of the people maybe tweet like a uh, Gordon Duncan. <laughs> you know, as if that's, <laughs> as, if, as, if, as if that's a brilliant part or they'll put like Gordon like G H O R D O. Aye, aye, aye. And one, like so that's it is funny, like you do get it is funny. And then every now and then I think are these people serious? Like, are there mm-hmm. adults out there who who like cannot believe that not everything is seen through a prism of Celtic or Rangers? These people must aye. genuinely believe that, which is it's kind of sad in a way, but aye, it's funny. Isn't it? I I mean, I've, I've I remember see I can't remember if it was a forum or Twitter, and then like in, in the same thread or the same one person's gone ah Duncan's exposed his exposed his colours and I he's exposed his colours and I. <laughs> Uh, and then Sunday, the mask is slipped. The mask is slipping. That's that. The mask is slipping, man. It's like, honestly, the way and for- well, like, if you think about what the role is as well, like I very rarely will will actually give my opinion. So people will then think that they can see through. So if you come on and say, you phone me up and say, Morelos is the best striker there's ever been in Scotland. If I just sit there and go, I, I, yeah, you're right. The show's not, that, that's going to be a pretty mm-hmm. short show. So even if I did believe that. I would hide it and I would say, oh, hold on a minute, but what about this and what about that? And mm-hmm. then people listening to that would go, oh, listen to him, listen to that. So anti Morelos, the mask is slipping. But it's. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what? Do you know what, I, what I'll say about you, Gordon? I know I remember because um, how long you how long you done Super Scoreboard for? Unbelievably, this is the end of my fourth season. Is that? I've never met somebody. I've never heard somebody just fit into something right away. Or you've no heard somebody. It was just fucking so slack, man. I was like, effortless, man. And Camel going, who is this guy? Oh, this guy's like, brilliant. How were you? Fans. How were you uncovered? The previous host did did the show for two years, I think. Right, and I, like I say, I'm now at the end of the fourth year. And uh, last week, a boy phones up and goes, "All right, Jerry, and what I was what I say that right? I was." <laughs> 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 I mean, I can handle Duncan as one of the staff. Aye. Right. On, but, you know. Evening, Mark. Evening, Jerry. Uh, anyway, my point. Exactly. <laughs> can I speak to Hugh? <laughs> well, that's the other one. Is they go? Can I speak to Hugh, please? As if like it's one phone that I need to then pass around. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you find does this wind you up on all right sorry i'm cutting you off but i always think it's funny when, when callers go uh, you go welcome to the show and they go hello mark hello roger hello hugh yeah. it's like aye, every one aye. of them we go through every single one aye, if it's like don't, new year don't happy don't new year that. gordon happy new year don't put you up to that question because... no, I <laughs> right I'm pretty torn on this one, right? In an ideal world, and it, now that I've said this, you're going to notice it even worse, right? Oh, no. Because I will try my best to make that not happen. So I'll say, <laughs> next up in the line, we've got, we'll get Grado in Glasgow. Grado, a Rangers going to win tomorrow? Hoping that he'll just go straight into the answer and say, aye. I don't think they will. Sometimes they go, aye, aye, I think we will. Oh, sorry, sorry, before we go. <laughs> aye. Gordon, aye. So I used to get quite annoyed about it because I thought... <laughs> The show would be so much slicker if, if, if it would just go, however, to then go back to what we said earlier. Do you know what? See if people want to phone up and be nice and ask. That's that. So, yeah. so what, yeah. what annoys me is somebody sometimes when they phone up and say, first time caller. And then they're like, they're like, or sometimes they go, I, I've tried to phone uh, last week, but I couldn't get through. So this is my first time. Aye. And you're like, me, just get to the point. <laughs> I don't mind the first time caller because I think it's, it's good, whether this is a wee trick of radio or not, but it's good for people to know that it's you know it's not an old boys club. Aye. Aye. Mm-hmm. We know that you know you can still phone up for the first time all these years later. Um, but oh, I mean, I was going to be a first time caller when DL said that was a penalty, man. I'm telling you, I was nearly phoning <laughs> while I was driving the way home, man. Honestly, the thing is, like, see what you're saying about like the happy New Year's and stuff, because then I feel terrible because obviously they're just being nice. But a guy, a guy <laughs> like said, like, oh, Gordon, want to wish you well, and, like the birth of your daughter. She was like seven weeks old. I was just like. I like. Because I, 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 I don't want him to say that, but he's obviously just been nice. So oh, I know, I know. <laughs> what about, what about, Gordon? What about? There's been a couple of calls. I think recently. You think that's somebody that wind up, man. That is, that is not a oh, I, That is not an Angels fan. Yeah. Um, it's must be a difficult one to deal with. I think again, going back to sort of misconceptions, I would say that happens 
nowhere near as often as people think, right? Because, Aye. for instance, we live a, um, a good example. was a guy phoned in recently, right? And he was slaughtering James Tavernier and he was a Rangers fan. And it did sound strange, right? Because you're thinking, why would you be slaughtering James Tavernier? Uh, the, guy's, the guy's flying. And inevitably, Twitter will then light up with people saying, never a Rangers fan, never a Rangers fan, never a Rangers fan. But that same guy has been phoning up to talk about Rangers good, bad and indifferent for like 15 years. And I can see all his, you know, his call history on the screen. So he was only a Rangers fan. So that stuff doesn't happen too much. The only thing I will say is I felt like one or two nights when Celtic were really hitting the skids earlier on in the last you know, couple of months, there was one or two nights where I thought, yeah, maybe. And the reason you can tell is because most of us will be not necessarily regular calls, but guys that have at least called once before. Yeah. And so their name is in the system. So, you know, if you get to a night where you're getting loads of new numbers, you know, with no name, and it's guys that are saying, I've not been to work in 10 weeks. <laughs> I've broke my heart. Ah, you kind of like... Uh, <laughs> I've bought the I 10 in old t-shirts. Pretty Santa Ponza. But then it is important to not lump them together because your man who cancelled the holiday to Santa Ponza, which was... The best line, you know, is it Radio Gold. He phones and talks about Celtic all the time. So he's right. not a wind up here. Oh, so that was a genuine one then? 100%. He's on about Celtic all the time. Oh, brilliant. What about the boys as well? Ten, we'll get 10 in a row next season. <laughs> you know, am I missing something here? That one was that one was strange because I thought that maybe was a wind up just based on what I've said, you know, like being a bit more, bit more suspicious recently. Um now, now I'm not so sure it was, and I kind of wish I had handled it a bit differently because it, it, it went viral. You know, everybody was sending me it, um, and you know, it, it caused quite the stir. So I wish I had, I don't know, I wish I had like stuck with it a bit longer to, to really try and establish. Because obviously, what are you on about? I, I, on one hand, you think, look, if this is a wind up, I just want to nip this in the bud. I'm not like, I don't want it to become a farce where people think they can, they can sort of do that. I don't know. I, the more it went on and then listening to the clip back and stuff, I don't know if it was just... Mate, just get his details and just put a, a plea on the <laughs> Super Scoreboard to get him back home one night and we'll... There's I'll, me and Gredo will come on as well, man, and we'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, well, Gordon, we were talking as well about um, how how that this job that you're doing, I know it's good for you. you, you've got a young family and stuff like that. And uh, as I say... I, Blowing smoke up your ass here, but I reckon you could be on. You could do Sky Sports, absolutely no bother. BT Sports, is that mm-hmm. something in the future? Obviously, you don't want to say, you know, like no. you want to leak or whatever. However, but is that something that you maybe want to do in the future, like TV? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Just in terms of if they want to wants to challenge themselves and mm-hmm. the horizon. So I, I would say definitely. At the same time, that I don't think will. I've got no designs on that happening anytime soon. I do love it because it is. It's it sounds cheesy, right? But it is. It, always was my dream job like genuinely it's all really? I have to do um, and it does give me a brilliant work-life balance I'm, without sounding too deep I know that's not what this podcast is all about but uh, <laughs> open up Gordon it's alright hey, come, come on we're here for you know, we're here mate we're here come on you know what I, what's in your mind Gordon come on everybody's ambitious aren't they right everybody wants to commit yes. but see if that then meant like you know down to London or it meant like mad hours compared to what I'm doing now I'm not sure how keen I'd be because I just Aye. this job gives me everything gives me a good balance so. Gordon you're talking about challenging yourself right Right. this leads me on nicely and it's quite an interesting one this week right because every week on Football Daft we put our guest football knowledge to the test with a 90 second quiz oh, no. right? right but this is what makes it interesting this week we've got a leaderboard right top of the leaderboard is John Sutton and Chuck Gung with 15 but just tucked behind him with 14 is Mark Wilson. Right? Ooh, Mark Wilson's on 14. Bad. Right? And I know John Johnson. And, right. and Keith Lasley, they're in there as well. Motherwell man, 14. A good doctor, Kenny Duker and Kevin Harper have got 13. Other selected scores include Morris Ross on 7, Pat Nevin on 6, and Barry for EastEnders on 4. And at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovingkrantz, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine, and Mick Sue Paterlein. And anybody on that board that you'd like to beat? Just Barry for EastEnders, anywhere above him. <laughs> <laughs> right, are you ready for the quiz, Gordon? I'm ready. So you can't right, pass, Gordon, uh, you can't pass, you need yes. to give an answer. Yeah. Who's right. doing it, Bob? Even if you've not got a clue, just give an answer. I've got him here, I'll do it, right? right. Okay, 
Uh, are you ready, John? 90 seconds on the clock? Yeah, 90 seconds. To the nearest thousand, what is the capacity of Easter Road? 17. Name two of the teams in Scotland's European group. Czech Republic, Croatia. Which English Premiership side is nicknamed the Citizens? Man City. Who is Motherwell's record signing? Oh, in the way. Jeez. John Spencer. What is the furthest northerly team in the SPFL leagues? Elgin. In what year were Hibs formed? 1892. Who was Celtic's manager before Brendan Rodgers? Ronnie Dyler. Who is currently in charge of air? Mark Kerr. What club did Hibs sign Alex Gogic from? I'm on Aki's. Who is Motherwell's most capped player? Stephen Craven. What is East Kilbride's nickname? The Roundabouts. <laughs> Who is currently top of the English Championship? Norwich. In what country did Morelos play in before joining Rangers? Mm. What team moved to Livingston and changed their name? Meadowbank Thistle. Time! Oh, right I think when... That was... He was dynamite at that. Did you add on a couple of mere wee seconds there, man? Bob's delay on his computer, it's mental. I I've noticed that today. Yeah, I've give, I gave God a couple of extra seconds. Aye. So don't worry Matt, about it. My, my, two, my two wains are in for school, man. They'll be on the iPads and the Wi-Fi will be getting absolutely yeah, He's He's an answer then, it's pure. What is <laughs> 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 right, Gordon, I'll go through your wrong answers. Right. Here we go. Uh, to the nearest thousand, Easter Road is 20,000. Okay. Hibs were formed in 1875. East Kilbride's nickname, the Kilby. Yeah, yeah, it makes Aside sense. Aside for that, mate, you got what? everything right. So, you didn't beat Mark Wilson, unfortunately, but you got 11 points. I'll never live that down. Uh, he, hold on, he must have got, did he, how many questions did he get, you say 14? He got 14 right, didn't he? He got 14, mate, aye. Out of 14? Aye, well, I don't know how many he managed to get, I don't he know if he got, some quicker. I don't know. But anyway, he yeah. beat Barry Free Senders, mate. That's good, that's true. We're staying Sally! Yeah, yeah, I'll take that, I'll take that. That was your goal for the word go. Correct. <laughs> I enjoyed that, bit of pressure, a bit hot on the ball in here. <laughs> Gordon, <laughs> thanks very much for coming on today, mate. That was really, really good. Did you enjoy yourself? Brilliant. Anything. Have you got any advice for us as hosts? I think I'm no position to give out advice to him. <laughs> I don't believe that, mate. <laughs> <laughs>I know, I can. I it's yeah. uh, I don't know if it's the same with footman because like say they, they they puns man, he would have fucking ran a mock on that. He he'll be gutted to realise we've done that. Because he loves films and all, doesn't he? He's sharp as a tack with that kind he of is, stuff. Yes, he's got all that carry on. Uh, yeah. How do you feel as John when, when tools know here? How does it go? I mean, I know half the time you're 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 up there in that wee windy and you look as if you're fucking burst. <laughs> as if you've been as if you've been on the danger bottles all day. How are you feeling? Oh feeling feeling great. Is it obviously we miss Chris because you know Otherwise, it just turns into Rangers daft, which obviously you can get if you sign up to Patreon, patreon.com. <laughs> I've the producer, John. I've the producer. Brilliant. Uh, well, guys, thanks very much. You have been great. Leave your comments, subscribe, rate, share, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on LinkedIn, if I can be able to full lot. We yes. will be back next week with some more jam-packed Scottish football action. It's no nonsense. It's right in your face. And we're going to be here live on Spotify. Audio Frontier.